Welcome back to Epping Priceless. We are pumped for this episode because we are talking about more of our favorite animals. Yeah, we thought we were going to, for some reason, and we should have known to start with, we thought we were going to be able to fit all of our pets uh, into one episode and that for sure was not done. We nope. just covered dogs and cats, <laughs> not even all the other crazy stuff that we've had. Yeah, so this episode we're going to be talking about his aquariums yes. we're going to be talking about some of his other pets that he's had some pretty crazy ones as well so we're really excited definitely this is for sure my number one passion in life is animals yes. so any kind of animal i can get my hand on i do and i still have a long list of stuff i want to own yes for that's for sure so we hope you guys enjoyed our previous episodes and especially our dogs and cats episode <laughs> Pets part one. Yeah. Pets part one. Now we're on pets part two. The life of pets. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> the extended version. Yes, exactly. So I guess we'll just get started on your aquariums. The aquariums is probably, um, at least for about half my life, no, a little over half my life, uh, has been my passion. I started off, I want to say I was um, 12 or 11, and I begged my parents. I Somehow I got it in my head that I wanted aquariums mm -hmm. but I didn't just want like everyone else does just get a, a simple fresh water I want salt water yeah exotic fish and this is right around the time that we were getting uh, certified to scuba dive mm -hmm. so the whole family could scuba dive well you were still too young yeah but we went on trips and started getting to that so I was fascinated by the water I've always been a huge animal person but I really really connected with uh, aquatic life at that point so I begged my parents for a big saltwater aquarium for my birthday. Yeah. And they told me, as long as you go do all the research and you read and you're actually going to be able to take care of it, we'll get you one. So they took me to a pet store and <laughs> somehow I convinced them that a hundred gallon aquarium was the best starter tank. For me. <laughs> and if, you know, if, if you don't know about aquariums a lot, a hundred gallons is a, a large aquarium. Um, the most popular aquariums in the United States is either a 10 gallon or a 20 gallon aquarium. And he got a hundred gallon. A hundred gallon. Yeah. So when you go to someone's house and typically they have a, a tank out on the side, that's like two feet long by 12 inches by 12 inches, inches. Um, that's like a 10 or 20 gallon. Tank. Yeah. So that's the most common one to get. Right. I feel and, like a 10 or 20 gallon is one of the basic ones yes. that you see where people have like lids and stuff on yes, them exactly. still. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't want that. I wanted a big <laughs> tank with some badass fish in there. So I started reading a ton. Uh, I got a few books. I went online and I joined um, this forum, this group that's all the aquarium hobbyists in South Texas. It's called MAST. Yeah. It stands for Marine Aquarius Association of South Texas. It's pretty much everywhere from uh, Dallas, Houston, South. Um, so... San Antonio, Austin, all the Valley, everything yeah. in that area, we're all in one group. And it's a great place to um, to learn a lot. Okay, sorry about that break. Our dog almost knocked over all the uh, camera <laughs> and equipment right now, running around being a, a silly nut. A little Kahlua. Kahlua, yeah. Right now we actually have a, a costume on her because she likes to get dressed up like Mimosa and she has a, a fairy princess riding her back. Mm -hmm. So maybe she's feeling a little wild. <laughs> but uh, yeah, back to Mast. <laughs> It's a great forum, a great group to uh, to learn a lot. There's people on there that have been keeping aquariums for since like the 80s, decades. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, when saltwater aquarium hobbyists were in their infancy. Yeah. Like they did, they did a lot of stuff wrong, and they learned over years and years of trial right. and error. Well, so, there's like I know a lot of the books that I've read of yours that have to do with like the fish and their relationships like to each other mm -hmm. and a lot about their like personalities really their demeanors and stuff like that yeah. like that probably took a while and that was not discovered in the 80s you know oh it took a long time because a lot of these fish they've seen them in the ocean but they don't truly know how they react and what their uh, roles are in the reef in right. the ecosystem yeah so keeping an aquarium a lot of it is um it, you need to keep the water quality pristine and you're emulating an ocean mm -hmm. 
but a big part of it is compatibility because people see all these amazing fish and you want to put them together because they look cool but these fish do not fucking mix right they fight they will kill each other dominance territory there's a lot of stuff that goes exactly so that group um really took me in and i was the youngest person in the group at the time you know i'm 12 yeah (laughs) these people are hobbyists and also side note uh to start with a saltwater aquarium is not the cheapest thing. No. Saltwater aquariums, all the equipment that you need um, is a lot more expensive than freshwater. And then the fish themselves are very expensive. Super expensive. So I learned a lot. I read a lot, did all my research, convinced my parents to get the tank. Boom, we got a first 100 gallon tank. And it was awesome. It went really well. Um, I learned a lot in the group. Everyone that keeps aquariums will make a ton of mistakes, but that's how you learn. Yeah. And uh, you grow from there. And as soon as you get one, you're hooked. It, you're addicted. Yeah. And you just want more aquariums, bigger, different kinds of fish. You need another aquarium because you can't keep certain, certain fish, fish with this fish. Right. Then, you know, so we got into it. Mom and dad fell in love with it. And uh, mom really embraced it with me. So she would go with me to like all the meetings, different fish stores. Right. Anywhere I wanted to go, we would go and check this stuff out. Mm-hmm. So we had that aquarium for, I would say, maybe a year. We jumped in again, bought another one. We bought a bigger tank this time, 125 gallon tank. Yeah. And this time we wanted to try our hand at corals. So to keep typical fish with just a rock in there, it's called live rock and fish is the most basic way to have an aquarium. The next step step up is to get into corals. Okay. I feel like corals are a lot more finicky than they are a lot harder. Tanks. That's why it's the next level. Okay. Um, they need e- they're even more sensitive to water quality. Yeah. And then for fish, you only need to test a couple of the parameters. You know, like pH, ammonia, nitrate, nitrite. Right. Things that affect the fish. With corals, there's like ten other different things you need: magnesium, phosphate. Right. Um, and you need like the so special lights too. That's another thing. So. Corals grow from sunlight, so depending where they are found naturally in the reef, Mm -hmm. you need to emulate that light. Oh, so even then you have to kind of group corals together, right? Well, you have to group corals together for another reason, because corals aren't nice either. Corals are living entities that want to say, get the fuck away from me. So other corals, they fight with them, and they have stinging tentacles that come out that typically people don't see, but at night you see them. Right. And so they they have chemical warfare on each other, and they'll try to kill each other out if you put them too close. Okay. And then you need to know, does it need low light, medium light, high light? What kind of current does it like? Okay. Some corals do not do well in fast current. It, it smothers their tissue. They're too soft and sensitive, and they wither away and die. So then you have to, like, adjust the filtration system. You have to gotta adjust pumps. a lot of shit in there. Okay. The water, you have to emulate, you have to make your own water current inside of the aquarium mm-hmm. that is good for the corals and place them accordingly. Okay. So when you get into corals, it's a whole nother level of <laughs> whole care. Whole different ball game there. And then within corals themselves, there's uh, like three different types. Mm-hmm. There's softies and then hard corals. And then within hard corals, there's two different types. There's stony and polyps. Okay. So softies are the most basic. Mm-hmm. Then you go to the uh, hard corals and within them, they get extremely hard to take care of. Really hard to grow. They're amazingly beautiful, entrancing, right. you know, creatures. They almost but, look like neon, some of them. Oh, the colors are insane. Especially with the lights that we use. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people think they're black lights. They're not. It's actually a hint of blue. They're called acetonic lights. Okay. And those lights actually emulate a lot of the blues in the wavelength and moonlight. Oh. So when we throw those on, the colors fucking glow. Yeah, I mean, I've seen them, obviously. Like, I don't know nearly as in depth as he does about anything i've only seen him do it and then if he asks me like to do something for him then that's about it yeah but other it's a than lot of that, reading because yeah unfortunately and, and like i said a lot of stuff is expensive if you buy something and it your tank is not what it needs mm-hmm. it'll wither away and die in a day or two yeah i mean and then you're out a little coral the size of my fist can cost anywhere from 60 70 dollars to a couple hundred, three, four hundred even. I right. mean, so these corals are very expensive, very rare. Super finicky too. Not only coral. Big time. I mean, obviously corals are, but also fish. I know that we've talked about like water temperature, for example. Oh, big time. If they even experience a slight water temperature difference, then they can die in the matter yes. of like hours. Yeah, there's some fish that are, uh, take for instance, a, a really famous fish from um, Finding Nemo. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the one with the scar in that tank? The one with the gill? Gill, yeah. Okay, gill is a, uh, a lot of people think he's a butterfly. He's not. He's a Moorish idol. 
Okay. A Moorish idol is in the aquarium business known as, if not the first, like top three hardest fish to keep. Oh. They do not do well in captivity. They die for no fucking reason. No one can keep them alive. Yeah. They're, like if you ever see one of a store, stay away from it and hope that an expert gets it. Right. Hope that it, people will buy them and they'll die left and right. Le- and they're very expensive fish. Which they're sucks a couple hundred because bucks. I was gonna say yeah. they're at least a few hundred dollars. And um, on the other on the other side of the spectrum, though, there are very hardy fish that are easier to take typically. Care of. Unfortunately, um, when you get a hardy fish, it's not gonna be that pretty, mm-hmm. or it is pretty and it's a fucking asshole. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're real aggressive, and they actually go after other fish. It will kill them. Yeah, because in the reef, they're used to big, big areas. Right. So when you put something in an aquarium, it needs to be appropriately sized. Mm-hmm. And then you need to think about in the wild: is it around a lot of other fish? Is it like a community fish that they all feed on, like algae and other stuff like that, smaller animals? Yeah. Or is that a predatory fish that is actually going out to hunt? And kill another fish, which ninety percent of the fish in, in the ocean are. Mm-hmm. I feel not like a, a lot, lot of people... them just eat or like um, greens, like yeah, vegetation. Exactly. I feel like a lot of people don't know that actually that like the fish that you see out in the wild are actually predatory and eat yeah. other fish. Yes, I mean they are eating very very small. Like brine and krill mm-hmm. are the most typical things to feed. Um, you know, fish in your saltwater aquariums. Right. And brine are shrimp, a shrimp species that's. I mean, it's like the size of a pencil head. They're really small, but that's yeah, a shrimp, and they're tiny. eating it. Exactly. And not only that, um, I feel like a lot of people don't know or don't understand how predatory, or not how predatory, how um, territorial Big these time. fish are. Big time. Super. There's, uh, there's certain fish that you can put a group of them in your tank. Mm-hmm. Uh, a like lot of the tanks. Yellow tanks. A lot yeah. of the tanks. And, but, and you know what? It's funny because when you add tanks to a tank, you have to choose an odd number. Because um, if you choose an even number, they'll pair off and they'll fight and they'll die. If there's an odd number, they're always changing to fight the next guy. Oh. So they will live together, but it's always kind of like a, a pecking order and they're trying to do it. Yeah. Another thing is you have to add, or you don't have to, you should. And it is common practice. If you're going to add a, a group, add them all at the same time. Oh. If you add three and then you want to add two more, No. the three that are in there are going to fuck up those two and the kill two. them. two, yeah, because they're so territorial. They're like, you're not in with us. Yeah. When you put them in the tank, they're in a brand new environment, and no one has claim to it. Right. You can't and sit you gotta, with us. <laughs> you got to think about that with all the fish that you're going to add. Okay. So when you get an aquarium, the proper way is to write out a list of what you want, mm-hmm. make sure that's going to be okay, and then you have to pick the order to put them in your aquarium. Because oh. if you pick one of the, the one that's going to be the boss of the tank, yeah. the boss of the tank goes in last. Yeah, you can't you put them in first, first every fish that you put up. in there, they're going to beat it up and most yeah. of the time kill them. It happens oh, all the time. There's so many mistakes to make, even though you can read everything online. Yeah. And it's, it's so difficult because these fish are beautiful and you see them in the store and you want it. And then some of the stores, you know, I'll, I'll give it to them. Some of them are very ethical and some of them don't give a fuck. They're just right. there for money. So some of them will... You'll, you'll pick a fish that is a little bit of a intermediate or expert level fish mm-hmm. and they'll just sell it to you. Now, the good ones will say, hey, what size tank do you have? Oh, uh, 75. That's not big enough for that fish. Right. That fish needs a 300 gallon tank. Yeah. Which is a big fucking tank. A huge tank, yeah. <clears throat> and the thing is, in fish stores, they sell everything. So you can get stuff in there that needs an extremely large tank mm-hmm. and someone with a, you know, a 20 gallon tank take it home and it'll die in a month. Yeah, that sucks. A lot of people, uh, and this is a big, big mis, uh, misconception, that the tank, uh, the fish only grow to the size of the tank. Whoever no. said that, and I've heard so many people repeat it, it's the dumbest fucking thing on earth. That's not true. That is not true. <laughs> the fish will keep growing. It will outgrow your tank. You will get stressed and suffer and get sick and die. Yeah. Because the tank is too small for it. Right. So I remember growing up, we had um, our huge tank with like sharks, stingrays. Yes. Um, we did have like some school of fish in there yeah. a few times. Some tanks, yeah, butterflies. Yeah. And then we had another tank that was a lot more um, like submissive, I guess, like submissive kinds yeah. of fish. And then you had your coral tank, which had like lionfish. And then no, 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 no. Lionfish is always in the predator tank, in the big boy tank. Oh, I thought you had a lionfish in the coral tank at one time because it Never. ate the clownfish. No, no, that was in the coral tank. That was a hundred twenty-five gallon tank. That was the tank oh. that I had the shark in before I moved him to the big boy tank. Oh, okay. So, like you're saying, a lot of moving in tanks. That's the thing. So, uh, I have had a few sharks in the past. And they're not giant requiem sharks. Uh, Requiem sharks, that term means they're the pelagic sharks that always swim and that are, like, 
Um, they're very, extremely predatory. Okay. The fish or the sharks that I would keep are in the in the catfish mm-hmm. or not catfish, cat shark. Cat shark finally, yeah. like nurse sharks, mm-hmm. but they're very small. Right. I mean, not very small. I mean, they're still two, three feet long. Exactly. But um, yeah. So I bought a tank from a guy and it had a shark in there. And it grew too large for that tank. And that's when I convinced my parents. We got a 240-gallon tank. Mm -hmm. That was the coral tank. Beautiful. Eight feet long by two feet by two feet. Big fucking tank. Beautiful. Full of corals. Yeah. Um, After that, I got a 400-gallon aquarium. And it is very large. Um, Her and I can get inside of it, no problem. Yeah, that's the one that we've been talking about that's behind the tapestries. It's actually behind us, if you're watching on YouTube, behind the tapestries in progress. When we moved to this house, it got shut down. I haven't put it up, uh, got it running yet, but it'll be it'll be soon. Yeah, and then my favorite tank that you had whenever I was growing up was the more submissive tank because it had the puffer fish. That was the puffer. Yeah, that tank kind of became like where your fish went yes. when I got the bigger tanks. So I am obsessed with puffer fish. I think they're my spirit animal. And <laughs> they're, they have so much personality. And it's weird when so much. for you to tell someone that, but if you kept saltwater aquariums, you understand because... Fish are not as um, just dumb as people think. No. They learn who you are. They know when you're going to feed them. Right. They follow you around the room. So uh, your puffer fish, we would feed bananas to. Yes. Do you remember that? We would feed them bananas. And I was obsessed because I thought it was so cool that I was feeding a fish banana. Yeah. You would just take out a piece and put it to the edge of the water and he'd come up and take it right out of your hand. Yeah. He was awesome. I hand fed him and he was a stars and stripes puffer fish. Yeah. And then, which stars and stripes puffer fish are not, don't usually blow up like normal puffer fish, right? Um, they, the only puffer fish that just do it all the time, like get freaked out, are the porcupines. Are the porcupines. The ones that typically people think of when you say puffer fish with the spikes on it. Mm-hmm. Um, those fuckers blow up all the time. Like, yeah. you know, something splashes next to them and they're like, ah, blow up. <laughs> um, the other, all the other species do not really blow up unless they're, they're stressed or they're under a situation. Right. I remember one day, though, that the Stars and Stripes did blow up. One time. Yeah. One time. It was the size of, like, a basketball. Mm-hmm. It got huge. It literally, when I saw it, I thought it was about to explode inside the aquarium and die. Yeah. Because they just inhale so much water, and their skin, do you remember feeling it? It's very slimy very, and rubbery. Yeah. It just expands like a balloon. And it's this guy insane. was, you know, I want to say six, seven inches, and he got the size of, like, a basketball. I was going to say, yeah. he was Maybe actually pretty big yeah. for... Um, a puffer fish that like I saw and then we got a porcupine puffer fish later on yes we've had many puffer fish very many very many different um, what do they do they call them species yes okay yeah. different species of puffer fish like um, aren't like box fish in the same box fish cowfish puffer fish they're all yeah, like Toby's. in the same family yes exactly yeah and so. that's why uh, just like the cowfish mm-hmm. and the or a lot of the box fish <clears throat> similar to the uh, puffer fish they're very poisonous. You know, they always say that like the a rare delicacy for sushi is pufferfish, yeah. blowfish. But if you eat it wrong, it's deadly. Yeah. Well, you know the cowfish and stuff. They're extremely toxic. If they get stressed out, they release a toxin in the tank. Can kill every fish in there. Right. Before you can even do anything about it. If you catch it, you need to take it out. Remove all the water in the tank. Hope to God you have a backup water that's already mixed and ready to go because you can't just throw fresh water and salt immediately. Right. You have to let it mix very properly and then replace it in the tank. So there's a, there's a lot of cool fish that are poisonous Yeah. and release toxins. And if you're not there, everything inside your tank can die. From a blink of an eye, you can get home, and one fish that died could literally crash your tank and thousands of dollars of corals and fish are dead. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's absolutely insane how much, one, that I think you know about this topic. I think it's amazing because I love learning about it, and especially whenever – we go snorkeling, scuba diving, Big everything, time. and you can explain things to me. And I'm like, can I touch that? And yeah. you're like, yes or no? <laughs> yeah, it, for sure. Yeah. But and I've, I've touched a lot of things in the ocean yeah. and picked up and grabbed and the whale shark, for instance. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we, we've been we, on one trip to go swim or snorkel with the whale sharks, mm-hmm. and you are not supposed to touch them. For a reason. By federal code. By federal law. Yes. And you can be arrested. And they tell you this. Do not fucking touch the whale shark. Try to swim because they're so fast. They look like they're slow. No. But when you get in the water with them, their big tails, you know, 15 foot tails, just gently going back and forth. They're hauling ass. Yeah. You have to swim as fast as you can to even barely keep up. And then they just pass you up. Mm-hmm. 
And when I did it, I swam, I held my breath, went under the water and grabbed onto its dorsal fin and rode it for a little bit. Yeah. So literally <laughs> I'm watching my brother do this. I'm pretty sure I had already gone. Um, and it was amazing. I don't think you guys understand the size of whale sharks. They're like the size of boats. Like, oh yes. They're, they're, they're huge. They're huge. The ones we saw were uh, young adults and they were like 20 to 25 feet. Yeah. They're, they're huge animals. And again, like he said, you literally have to swim as fast as you possibly can to yeah. even keep up with them, even like get a glimpse with of them. Good, with good fins with too. With good fins. And so my brother and I are pretty good swimmers just from snorkeling oh, yes. and scuba diving since we were younger. And so when I went, I'm like hauling ass and like keeping up with it pretty mm -hmm. well until I just can't until go Until you anymore. gas out and then it's just keeps going and, and it's, it's going it's so gone. slow, the tail. And it's just gently going in. It's fucking hauling Yeah, ass. and then you like feel the pushback from mm -hmm. its tail. It's insane. So I'm watching my brother go and he jumps in the water. You see his little fins kicking, blah, blah, blah. He goes under the water and all of a sudden you see his little fins aren't kicking anymore. And I'm like, how is he going that fast? <laughs> it's like, wait a second. What's going I, I on here? I wear a lot of, uh, you can see me under the water because my wetsuit and my fins are neon colors. They're neon yeah. colors. Yeah. And then, um, not your goggle strap, but the rest of you. No, oh, yeah. I wear that uh, bright neon. orange and neon green. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And literally <laughs> nothing is moving on him. Just his whole body. Just he looks Superman like Superman. <laughs> literally. Yeah. Up a man. Moving so fast. And it's hilarious. And obviously I didn't say anything. I'm just like, oh. <gasps> Oh, they, oh, well, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they do or if they, they can't confirm it because they, they couldn't see it. They didn't say anything. But I knew, dad knew immediately, and he's like, yeah, you went under the water, and then you ended up, like, way over there. You yeah. cannot swim in the ocean underwater <laughs> that far. I was like, hell no, I was riding the fucking whale show. <laughs> oh, my God, but you yeah, probably had to take so, such a deep breath. <laughs> yeah, oh, I was until, almost like blackout. I was riding that thing. I was, <laughs> once in a lifetime to do. But so. don't they tell you not to touch them for the same reason they tell you not to touch sea turtles? Uh, from the oils and all the it's yes. it's um the oils is uh, actually bad for corals. Um, sunscreen is bad for yeah for aquatic. Well, animals. I remember um whenever we went on that excursion and when we uh snorkeled with sea turtles that we weren't allowed to wear sunscreen. Yeah, they that's told us bad specifically not to. That's bad for them. And then they told us not to touch them because it can cause irritation to their skin. Yeah, it's the oil like that's in it. Whatever is in sunscreen is bad for them, especially if they breathe it in through their gills. Oh, it's not okay. good for them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of stuff that people put put bring into the water that's not good for that. But yeah, yeah. definitely. But yeah, um, scuba diving was always awesome because of the aquariums because we could see fish. Or sometimes we come home from a trip and we'd be like, we should get that one we saw and put it in the tank. Yeah, definitely. And then you do the research, like which tank can we put mm -hmm. it in? What will it mesh with? That's the thing. We got obsessed. I got obsessed. He did. We had a hundred gallon, a 125 gallon, a 240 gallon. And then when we got the big fucking tank, it's a 400 gallon. And all of these are set up. Yeah. Like at the same time. All of them are set up running in the house. Yeah. And the saltwater that I, the salt the big saltwater tank that I got from uh, this guy named Jose. He's a part of the group, and he was known for being crazy. He would go out and buy big fucking tanks, yeah, have it for like a half year, a year, and then sell it because he wanted a bigger tank. Oh my god! So when he sold this beast, yeah. we went and bought it for him. And this guy was awesome. This guy had a pet monkey. He had a pet he was so pygmy awesome. marmoset, which yes. is a extremely dwarf sized monkey, and it's I loved it. I wanted to be him and have that but he's like it was the worst mistake he ever made yeah it bit him all the time the, the smaller the monkey the less of intelligence which means less training mm -hmm. like they just do whatever the they fuck do they want whatever they want so that's why he said it sucked yeah he said he could only ever pet it or be friendly with it when it wanted to yeah and that when he wanted to put it like go back in the cage it would run so fast around the room jump on the curtains up he couldn't catch it for hours <laughs> it's just too fast for him but the pictures he would send me, I was like, dude, that's the fucking coolest thing ever. Yeah, it is awesome. We've always wanted a monkey. Uh, like, yeah. I think everyone does. I think everyone does, but like, we've always really like, wanted a monkey. Have considered it. Yeah. Have considered it. Have looked them up multiple times. And my, like, oh my gosh, my dream animal besides mimosa is a lemur. I have uh, always wanted a fucking we, lemur. We could do a lemur. The problem is. Um, we have the room to build an enclosure already in the backyard. Um, price is one thing. Yeah. Two, three thousand um, dollars per baby, and they must be in a group of at least three. 
So, so it's not just you can't just get one. It's really yeah. bad for them. They are very social animals. Okay. So you want to so get it's a little difficult. Pretty much you want to get like one female and two males. Right. Or two females and a male because they're um they're uh, matriarchal. Yeah. The women run it, and so it, one woman a woman will rise. And then that'll be her fucking clan. Oh, interesting. But you want to have like at least three. Right. So, but we'll, yeah. we'll talk about like exotic <laughs> animals. We'll talk about our vacations on another episode when we talk about like more wild exotic animals that we have encountered. But yeah, back to your tanks. What else we got? So in the big tank, uh, I've had some really, really cool stuff. I've had, like I said, two, three species of sharks. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had really cool stingrays. Some beautiful, one of my all-time favorite fish, lionfish. Yes. Very venomous. Beautiful. Or poisonous, I'm sorry. Not venomous. Um, really pretty. They're one of my all-time favorite fish. Uh, I have been stung by it before the tank. How'd it uh, feel? Been stung by this. <laughs> horrible. And by a sea urchin, a big spiny one. Horrible. They suck. Yeah. Um, but one of my coolest guys that was um, a bit of an asshole was Zeus. He was a dick, but So awesome. Zeus... Uh, I got this. I saw a post on Mast, the website, and someone said, "Emergency, emergency! Selling a Tessalata mori eel, which is the second biggest species. Mm-hmm. You know those giant green ones yeah. that you see like at SeaWorld and shit. This one gets a little bit smaller, just like a little. Bit. <laughs> it still gets eight, nine feet. Yeah, a massive eel, and they were selling it for pretty cheap because it was so strong. He had it in a seventy-five gallon tank." In a 75 gallon? When I got him, yeah. And he was about, I want to say a foot and a half. I mean, he was he was pretty thick when I got him. Yeah, I was going to say he wasn't like a baby. No, he was means. No, by by no means. And this eel is a really nice one. They sell for easily a, $1,000 each. Mm-hmm. And he was selling for dirt cheap because it, it, they're so strong. They're like snakes. They're pure muscle. Yeah. Um, there, there's no fat on them. There's no nothing. They are dangerous when they need to be and when they want to be. Be careful around them. Um, but it had, and they do this all the time. They're known for it. All eels are. They rearrange the rock work inside your aquarium to fit what they want. Mm-hmm. Because they like making caves and, and, you know, tunneling in and out and right. being hidden and only poke out their head. That's what they like to do. And so they'll rearrange the rocks to how they see fit. Yeah. Well, it slapped a rock over so hard that it hit the glass and shattered the tank. <gasps> so he had a huge emergency. Water everywhere in his house flooding. Yeah. Got enough water to put it in an ice chest, put in the ice chest, put an aerator in there, and put him online. And I went and picked him up. Oh. When I got him, he was in an ice chest on the floor. And this house was a mess, a wreck. He's like, thank you so much. Do you have a tank? Like a big tank? I was like, dude, I have a 400-gallon tank. It's at 650 gallons total water volume with the filtration and the refugium. Right. It's a big fucking tank. It's huge. And he's like, oh, so badass. So I put it in my tank, and he grew. Yeah, this guy got fucking... Massive, Massive. but like he said, he was an asshole. So, like moray eels, they are ferocious guys. Mm -hmm. They hunt by smell. You even put a little, like a a fish, just dip it in the the tank, and they'll smell it. And they get real excited and real rowdy. They'll come out of their holes and start swimming around like, like, I mean, hell on wheels. They're ready for food. And the thing is, they have piss poor eyesight. They can't see for shit. Mm-hmm. So bite first, ask questions later. <laughs> That's their thing. And if there's fish around that are like slow moving and shit, they'll nab one on accident and then just fucking rip it apart. Oh my they, God. they are very similar to like alligators where they do the death roll. Yeah. They grab something and their teeth are uh, like hypodermic ner- needles that are faced backwards. Okay. So when they grab you, you can't pull back. Yeah. You can't pull out of it. Uh-huh. It just digs deeper into it. Oh my God. They also... They're the um, the inspiration behind the alien movies. You know when they, in the alien the movies, they open their mouth and another mouth comes out? Yeah. Eels have that. Right. They have a secondary jaw inside that comes out and grasps it so that any struggling fish cannot get away. They twist like crazy and rip off fresh, uh, like a, uh, a piece off, mm-hmm. bleeds out, and then they eat it. Oh, my god. So they're goodness. ferocious. They're super so ferocious. So Zeus grew to about three and a half feet. I want to say as round as like a, like a red solo cup. He's a big fucking he boy. Big. And he ate easily a thousand dollars of fish. <laughs> he ate some seven, eight inch fish. Like a few of them. A trigger, a tang, a bat fish. He ate some two, three hundred dollar fish, like each. That he would soon regret. Yeah. So he was amazing. <laughs> he was beautiful. I loved him. 
Uh, I just, at that point in the aquarium, I didn't have very many fish because they kept missing appearing because you'd fucking take them out. Like, they would live for a while with him and then it would disappear. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one day I came home and he met his demise at, a, I guess, gluttony, if you call it. Um, he tried to eat about a nine-inch trigger fish. And a, a trigger fish, they're called so because of their top dorsal fin. It can fold into the body and when it wants, uh, pop up. Mm -hmm. And it sticks there. And the reason why those fish do that is because triggerfish at night, um, they stick themselves in a crevice of a rock, but they live where there's harsh, harsh current. So that trigger goes up and it locks them into the rock. So they oh. didn't get pulled out while they're sleeping at right. night. So they're meh, safe. But it's like a pretty strong, like definitely hefty fin. The spine on that dorsal yes. fin, if you were to grab it with your hand, it would stab right through your hand. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, Zeus tried to eat him, and halfway down, that trigger fin came up and sliced through his mouth, and he was locked in his mouth. So they both died. It was bad. What a it was, sad day. It was super <laughs> fucking sad. Super sad. I know he ate a lot of fish, but he was so impressive. He's Anyone that dead. came over to the house and saw him was like, what the fuck is in that tank? Yeah. And he's just a huge, beautiful, they're called honeycomb. Um, the true name is Tessalata, but honeycomb is the, you know, the common name. Yeah, they have like that They're pattern They're like a tan them. and they look like a, like rosettes, like a jaguar print on yes. them. Yes. And by the way, for those of y'all watching, um, we're going to put so many pictures on this episode of the aquarium. So many. I have some really cool stuff, especially my all-star that we're about to talk about right now. Yes. Highly recommend watching this episode for this reason. So you can see all of these dope ass fish and animals. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about. I think both of our favorites. He's by far the coolest pet I've ever owned. He was so amazing. So like I said, uh, I'm 31. I've been keeping aquariums since I was 12 years old. It's been a while. I've kept a lot of different kind of fish, a lot of uh, extremely expert level fish. But my last pet was by far the most incredible creature you could probably keep. Yeah. I got my hands on an octopus. I did my research. Uh, I've known a lot about them for a long time. They're always fascinating me. There's so many facets to that animal that a lot of people still don't understand. Scientists still can't figure out. Yeah. And I just, I love them. So I did my homework, joined another group, and read a lot. And uh, this group is actually called uh, Hank's Corner, like <laughs> Hank from uh, Finding Dory. Yeah. So that that's their mascot. And it's all the people that keep private octopus in the world mm -hmm. it's not even like a united states group it's it's, it's everywhere yeah, it's the world so there's fuckers on there that know their shit yeah of they've course. kept species on species on species they have three or four of them at the same time octopus are fucking rare yeah so aquariums already hard saltwater even harder then you go to like expert level fish and expert level corals octopus is like at the very tippy top like they're really hard to keep you really have to know what you're doing they're so sensitive to the water quality that if the temperature changes, you know, too quickly, like it's Texas, it's fucking hot here. We always, I always have to battle the heat here because the aquariums have to stay right at 82 degrees. Right. Or for the octopus that is stay at right at 76. Mm -hmm. So that's a constant battle. But they're so sensitive that if anything doesn't go their way or the, it, it, the water's just not that good and you're not changing and keeping up with the routine, they'll just fucking croak. Yeah. Or they'll ink the tank and die. And suffocate themselves and die in the tank. Right. Because the ink is meant to get away. They're not meant to be in their own ink. Exactly. Like it's, it's deadly for them. So, so how um, how rare is it to get the kind of octopus that you did? So as far as aquarium trade goes, there's about three or four um, common ones that... Or it's not common. Three or four octopus that you get. Mm -hmm. Everything else, it's too unrealistic they're too rare or they're uh, endangered species or it's just not possible to actually keep one right like deep water ones and shit like that yeah so out of the ones that are really in the aquarium business um he is he's the hardest one to get he's the hardest one to get and um what, got, he's a vulgaris he's a vulgaris octopus mm -hmm. um if y'all want to check out his instagram there's over 200 pictures and videos on there his name is professor bubbles yeah so the professor bubbles is his instagram y'all will see amazing pictures and videos um i used to well we'll go into this right now but i got him because i know the owner of the best aquarium store in san antonio and it's by far the best one i've been going obviously like we said over a decade to aquariums uh, yeah. stores in san antonio and they've you know risen fallen gone out of business whatever right 
Um, this one's the best. I talked to the owner and I told him I was interested in one and he knows me and he's like, you ready for one? I was like, I already have a tank set up yeah. waiting for him. And I put the word in for him. Lo and behold, within two months, he calls me up and he's like, dude, we got one. Cause they don't, they won't ever get one unless someone special orders it. Because mm-hmm. if they get it in the store, they can, they don't even have the system to properly hold it. it. What right. they do, because they are such escape artists and ferocious predators that they put them in hamster balls or guinea pig balls. Yeah, and then put them and in submerge the that in a tank and then like in a hamster cage so they can't get out. Right. And they wait for someone to sell it or buy it and then they transfer it into a bag and they're like, go, get it out of here. Like, yeah. we can't even handle it. So they won't even order them on the regular. The other fish, they just order it and then they wait for someone. And if it stays there for two, three months, whatever, it'll eventually sell. Yeah. Not the, Not octopus. the octopus. No, that's a special order item. And I take all the risks too. I have to pay them up front because octopus are so sensitive. That most, over half the time, I wouldn't say most, but over half the time that you receive them, they stressed in shipping and they ink the bag and they're dead. So you run a huge risk. Right. Then let's talk about their lifespan. The unfortunate thing about octopus is because they're so fast growing Mm -hmm. uh, and the energy that it takes, their their, uh, rate of growth is incredible. I mean, you saw Bubbles when he was a baby till the day he passed away and he was fucking huge. Yeah, he got huge. so massive. So how big is the tank that you kept Professor Bubble in? That one's 90. 90? How um, like long is it? Five feet. Five feet. Okay, so Professor Bubbles, whenever he spread out his tentacles, mm-hmm. he could reach from one side of the tank to the other side of the tank, almost. Tip to tip, yeah. almost. Almost. He got Like big. short by a few inches. Yeah. He was huge. Um, so they grow so quickly and um, they're the species of vulgaris, the one Bubbles was, uh, they only live about a year, year and a half, if you're lucky. And it's nothing about captivity. In the wild, they live way less. They live longer, actually, in captivity oh, because okay. not a lot of them make it out there. Right. They, they live a rough life. They're so smart, but they're, they're pr- predated on by a lot of stuff. Yeah. So sometimes you get one, and it's dead. Sometimes <laughs> you get one, and here's the thing about octopus. As soon as they mate... As soon as they mate in the wild, both the male and the female die. Yeah. The male dies, the female lays their eggs, and then wastes away because she guards them until she dies, Mm -hmm. and that's it. So you have no way of knowing if that octopus that you just received has Has mated mated. or not. Yeah. So you could get one, take it home, the next day it's dead. Or three days later, or two weeks later, it's dead. You have no way of knowing. It's a total crapshoot. It's totally, there's no way to tell that's so insane. So they told me they got one. I go get him. I bring him home, put him in my tank. And he is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Not only is he really the species I wanted, because there was like three that I that are available, and I was like, whichever one you can get, man. Right. And it was like a Bimac, which is a little bit of colder water species, a little bit cooler, not super cold. Um, the Caribbean Reef Octopus that is not as colorful and personable, and their size is a lot smaller. Okay. There's a pygmy, and then there's the vulgaris. Right. The vulgaris is the sought out after one. Okay, so the vulgaris, uh, bubble, Professor Bubbles. I don't know a lot about this species at all, only from what he's told me. But when we had Professor Bubbles, I thought he was the dopest thing in the world. He was. I literally showed so many of my friends videos and pictures of Professor Bubbles, and I thought he was so dope because he fucking changed colors. They, they, okay, so <laughs> there are some things about these creatures that are mind-blowing. Um, there are a lot of creatures in the animal kingdom that have really good camouflage. Mm-hmm. Okay, Their chromatophores, octopus and squids, are on another level. Yeah. They're on a whole other level of camouflage. They change instantly, not just color and patterns, but texture. Yes. Their skin looks like it's covered in like little like like rocks, frills spikes. or rocks or yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the thing about them is they've done extensive research to try to understand and they still don't understand because they did some experiments with octopus and squid. And what they did was and cuttlefish. Cuttlefish also same cephalopods. Right. Same family. Uh, extreme chromatophore um, like what they can do. Uh, yeah, don't fuck with cuttlefish, guys. No, yeah. <laughs> cuttlefish, I, I've swam with them and dove with them, and they're very creepy because they follow you, and they appear out of nowhere, and then they surround you because they're so curious. And the one in the Caribbean, in the Caribbean, the they're Caribbean super, cuttlefish are about three, four feet. They're yeah. pretty fucking big. And then there's like 20 of them around you and at, out of nowhere. That's freaky. I'll, we'll talk about that on the, yes. the dive episode. But 
Bubbles is incredible. And what they found out about the chromatophores of cephalopods mm -hmm. is that what they would do is they put them in an aquarium and they would change out the base, the floor of the aquarium to like a different pattern, like a rock. When it swam over it, it would change and look like the rock. And they're mm -hmm. like, okay, we already knew it could fucking do this. Let's do something else. They would put a shape in there with geometric patterns that do not occur in nature, like a, like a fucking hexagon. Yes. Okay. Or a octagon or a whatever shit that doesn't exist in nature right. and it would map the same shape which animals don't no other animals have done that before right and they don't understand how they're doing it well probably because it has like so many brains and so many hearts whatever yeah i mean true <laughs> they're like so smart yeah but that is interesting that literally no other species on the face of this planet does that. Yeah. So it's insane. I, I personally believe that octopus, octopuses. Octopuses, by the way, is the it correct is term. It is not, what is what do octopi? people say? Octopi? People think it's octopi. No, it's octopuses. It, it's based on its, uh, on its language etymology. Yes. Which it's Greek, not Latin. So it's octopuses. So octopuses. Um, I think that they are descendants of aliens. So that is a huge theory. And, you know, by all means, I can't discredit that. Because, and here's the big reason, octopus are the only animal on the face of this earth that can actively edit their RNA. Now, you might be asking, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> so most animals, when things happen to them and uh, their environment shows that they need to change, they, over the course of generations, through their DNA, yeah. will adapt. Evolution. Yeah. Evolution, right? Uh, maybe we need to be darker in this environment. We slowly will get darker skin, darker fur, patterns to hide, shit like right. that. They don't. Octopus can actively edit their RNA. So for people that uh, are, don't know about RNA and DNA, it's like... Um, Okay, so it's like a, a recipe. It's like a recipe book and a cook. So like typically when you want the food to change, like for everything, mm -hmm. you got to go and you change the whole recipe in the cookbook. And it, it's a lot of effort and everyone's got to get used to it. And it takes a long fucking time. Yeah. Octopuses say, fuck that. I'm going to hire my own cook and we're going to do what we want with the ingredients. Yeah. And that no other animal can do that. So this animal can be placed in a certain environment, and let's just say something disastrous happens. A shipwreck happens, destroys a coral reef, and kills a lot of the life and introduces new life. Mm -hmm. It will That individual, uh, individual can change some shit to either, I don't know, uh, smaller tentacles, longer arms, different, just different tactics. Right. A lot of divers have seen these octopus actually, um, they've been... Uh, adapting to unfortunately all the trash that gets thrown in the ocean yeah and they're taking lids and cans and bottles and hiding and using them to hunt right and so they'll take things a lot of divers you see these videos pop up now that are trying to trade with the octopus trash for like a shell yeah and they're chilling in the trash and they're like no this is perfect like trash is everywhere i'm cool i'm trash mm -hmm. so, but no other animal can do that pretty and no scientists animal. understand it. no scientists understand how they do it. If you look at the family tree of cephalopods, it goes all the way to the beginning. Yeah. Like all, all the, the way. way to like megalodon, sharks, crocs that have been alive before dinosaurs. Right. It goes way back there. Way back there. They, they're they untouched. They don't need to change. Yeah. Because they change whenever the fuck they want. Exactly. They just adapt and they're evolve incredible. literally on the dime. There's an octopus called the Mimic Octopus. And mm -hmm. it's called Mimic for a reason. You should look <laughs> it up. Uh, it's a white with brown stripes and it is known as the mimic octopus because of what it does. It lives in a certain part of the ocean where there's a lot of predators mm -hmm. and it emulates him. It will uh, rearrange its tentacles and they're striped to look like a lionfish and they swim like that. Yeah. Also, That's so one of the cool. deadliest uh, animals in the world, the sea snakes there, the crates there, yeah. they're striped. They go on the uh, ocean floor and the way they crawl, it looks like a whole bunch of sea snakes. Oh, the way they use their tentacles yes. and everything? Mm -hmm. How do they hide their little bulb head? They do it. <gasps> it looks like a whole bunch of snakes swimming. That's insane. They're incredible. Uh, there's some octopus out there, like the blue ring octopus is... Oh, deadly? <laughs> I, I, I want to... Don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. It's the deadliest animal on earth. The blue ring octopus. Is it? Yeah. More than a box jellyfish, 
uh, uh, irukandji, any snake spiders, they don't even hold a candle to the neurotoxin that box jelly, that uh, blue ring octopus right. hold. They're way up there. They're in Australia, and they're like, don't ever, you don't ever want to get near one of those. Right, but that's another thing. Um, all octopus are toxic. All of them have venom. All of them. All of them. Yes. So when I told, it was either you or mom about this. It was me. <laughs> yeah, I just, blah, blah, why don't you touch him? I was like, no, I don't want to get bit. Why? I'm like, because then I have to go to the hospital. So the thing about octopus is every single one of them that's ever been tested has come back with venom. Mm -hmm. Now, the venom does range from like uh, like a bee sting or like a spider bite, like, you know, like something mild or a scorpion sting. All the way up there to you're going to fucking die right. within the hour. And uh, the vulgaris, he contained, Bubbles was like, if I got bit by a rattlesnake. Right. It's a hemotoxin. Like, I for sure need to go to the hospital, but I'm not going to die immediately. Right. Some of the other ones have neurotoxin. Shut down your central nervous system. Exactly. Your heart stops. You start breathing. Nothing fucking works. Fuck. So, yeah, they're very intimidating animals. They can, if they bite you, you run the risk of getting very, very sick. Yeah. Very, very sick. They have nine brains, <laughs> one for each arm, and then a separate one. They have three hearts. These things are fucking crazy. They're insane animals, so, unlike anything else on the face of this no, planet. To watch him was amazing. Uh, he would change all different colors. He would follow you around the aquarium. Mm -hmm. He would follow the dogs. He knew when it was feeding time. The thing about bubbles, and you'll see this from uh, the pictures and videos we'll have on this episode... Uh, I decorated the shit out of his tank. Yes, for sure. So, so many toys. So many toys. So one of the number one thing that they tell you to do when you're keeping octopuses is um, mental enrichment. Mm -hmm. They're very smart animals, and it's going to be in your tank. And if it gets bored, it's going to start being self-destructive, or it's, it's not going to be good for the animal. You need to keep them enriched. So what I did is all the time before I had it and when I had them, I would hit up thrift stores, kid stores, um, like baby stores, because a lot of that stuff has non-toxic paint, and right. a lot of it doesn't have metal in it, because you can't have metal in the water. Yeah. So I'd buy him a whole bunch of fucking toys, action figures, puddles, uh, teething rings, a Mr. Potato Head, like all that, like I have a whole bunch of characters of, you know, um, Dragon Ball Z and like Star Wars and yeah. superheroes. Why well, put him in the aquarium with him and he'd go ape shit on them. Exactly. He would rearrange them, drag them around, pull the arms off. Especially with like a new toy that you would put in there. He'd oh, be yes. like obsessed with it for a little bit. Yeah, he would. Mm -hmm. And be like, oh my God, this is mine. Yeah, he's like, ooh, what is this? He, you know what he really liked? He liked the Dragon Ball Z character, uh, Majin Buu. He was all pink, like a pink alien. Yes. I think it reminded him like of a little squid or something. He I don't know. loved pulling off the head and both arms every single time. <laughs> I put Dragon Balls in there from the, the TV show, yeah. and he would move them all around. Uh, one of the cooler things that I did with him, I wanted to experiment a lot with him and, um, and try to get some cool videos of him doing things that hadn't been done before or that had rarely been done, like the screw test. Yeah. I would put a jar in there, a plastic jar that has screw top on it. I put a shrimp in there, and I put it in there. And... Think about it. It has to figure out how to unscrew something. Yeah, especially when it's never done it before it's or never, even seen it be done. Yeah, what the heck? Like, how would you even figure that out? Exactly. Like, if, you, like you if I, know. if you, that's like giving somebody a puzzle, like one of those Japanese puzzles, yeah, you something know, that they've that are never like block, seen before, that yeah. you've never seen or don't know how to do, and you're just figuring it out. Yeah, you're gonna slam it across the floor like for an hour until you figure out, like, oh, if I turn it this way, exactly. well, that's what the octopus does. It turns, it turns, it moves you know, over and over and eventually opened it and it blew my fucking mind because there's not that many videos of this on uh, online, mm -hmm. but I'm the one that had one. And then another thing I liked to get was uh, these specially made acrylic boxes. And it was just an acrylic cube, but it only opened from one way and you couldn't tell because it's clear. Mm -hmm. Well, I put food in there and he would take it and move it around like a Rubik's cube in his arms and eventually find it and pop it open and eat it. Yeah. And then every time that you would put it in again, he would get faster and faster. At yes, it. he would get really he fast remembered. with those boxes, actually. Yeah. So one of the things I really, really wanted to do was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this backfired on us. <laughs> yeah, I had this idea to get the first ever, and it really was, first ever uh, like video footage underwater from the octopus. Mm -hmm. So I had the idea to get an iPhone, get a waterproof, mm -hmm. like, an, you know, like a life-proof case, put it in there, hit record, and then give it to him. Yeah. So it took me a while to get a phone that I was uh, okay with if something happened to it. 
And I went and bought the badass. It was one of my friend's phones. Oh, yeah. It took me a while. <laughs> You're the one who got it for me. Yeah, it took me a while. Super excited. Thank you for that. Who was it? Dylan. Dylan. Oh, <laughs> of course, Dylan. You're a badass. Um, yeah, super pumped that I finally got a, a fucking phone that I could do this with. I went and bought the case. <laughs> we put it in there, and I'm super pumped. I'm recording on the outside of the aquarium. Bubbles is in there. Anytime I open the tank, bubble, Bubbles turn to the fucking crack in. He thought food time and very aggressive and very fast. Yeah, so um, one thing about octopus are that they, like he said, are escape artists. Oh, yes. So anybody that has an octopus tank that knows what they're doing mm -hmm. has this thing boarded the fuck up. Anytime like, I opened... Uh, his tank, it looked like I was like uh, letting Hannibal Lecter go. Literally, he has so many latches. Locks. I have locks so on the top. Latches, locks. yeah. Like, it is insane, but you have to do it or else they'll be figure out a way to They're get out. They're known as escape artists. They are many stories from uh, aquariums and laboratories and zoos of octopus escaping their tanks, mm -hmm. going down uh, drain holes, um, short circuiting uh, some of the electronics mm. so the tank floods and they get out. Yeah. I've seen him go through the small drain holes in boats when people catch him. Yeah, I've seen those. That's octopus. another thing. They can like morph their bodies. So an octopus, um, a lot of people think it's the diameter of the eye. That's what they can fit through. It's not. It's actually the distance between their eyes. But mm -hmm. so Bubbles was, you know, like 34 inches when he died. And his eyes were about that far apart. He could go through anything like a quarter. Uh, actually, we'll throw a video on there of when he goes inside the... Uh, I have a skull in there with him. Oh, yeah, and he goes through a the eye. A human skull, and he goes and... through the eye. And he's, like, the size of the skull, and he goes through the eye hole. It's yeah. really cool. But, yeah, they're super escape artists. You have to... When you create and uh, set up the tank, you have to make sure there's literally... Typically, in the back of the tanks, they're very open. You want airflow. Mm -hmm. You know, you want that air to escape. And uh, otherwise, it gets very hot. That's right. another thing, too. Uh, you literally can have no space in the tanks. It has to be very specially made and very secure. And then a lot of people put like bags of sand or like weights on it. I actually fastened locks onto it. Yeah. So yeah, anytime I opened the tank, it was like, ch -ch 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 -ch. it was like, what the fuck is in there, bro? It's like bubbles, man. You're cracking. You'll get out. Yeah. And you know what? Remember when we get close to the water's edge and if I wasn't feeding him fast enough, he would take in water with his siphon. They yeah. have two main siphons. That's how they breathe. And shoot water out like a fucking cannon. Like half a gallon of water, which is a lot of water, of salt water, all over me or all over the floor. It's Literally. splashy. So also, whenever you would feed Bubbles, um, you don't hand feed him because, again, he's, no, yeah. he's uh, venomous. But he'd use this little, like, grabber thing that you yeah, put It was like in acrylic tank. stick, yeah. Yeah. And so one time I did it, and Bubbles grabbed the stick and... This bitch is so fucking strong. Super strong. Like, you are literally playing tug of war with an octopus that is like this. That weighs big. like two and a half pounds. Yes. Yeah. And you're literally using like mm -hmm. all your strength and force. And literally, it's just until he wants to let go. Yeah. And so that's the thing. And I've told you, and I only let one other buddy, uh, Lorenzo, feed him. Mm -hmm. um, if you put it in there and you pull and you, and like, you can over power an octopus obviously I'm sure. yeah if you rip it you he won't let go and you rip all his arms off <gasps> and they do regrow their arms but they're like lizards yeah um but the amount of energy it takes dramatically shortens their lifespan oh my Lisa. because it takes so much energy life yeah. force to recreate those arms yeah no so don't pull so don't do that you so if sleep. they pull you have to stand there and wait yeah and he'd do that to me sometimes and i have to sit there for like five ten minutes until <laughs> he was bored and then he'd like go off to the side of the court. Yeah. It was whatever he wanted. Okay, so. Okay, so back to our story. So I had that uh, brilliant idea to uh, have this amazing underwater footage and give Bubbles the, the phone mm -hmm. on record so he could, you know, record himself. And it's crazy because I would take videos of Bubbles and then turn the phone around and show it to him. And he would come right up to the glass, put his eye next to it, watch it. His pupils would change. Yeah. And then his colors would change. As he's watching himself, he'd get excited. Yeah. So I was like. I'm going to put this on front-facing camera. He's going to fucking go ape shit. He takes the phone right out of my hand, <laughs> and I'm so excited, and then he just engulfs it with his arms. Yes. And he does that. Uh, he's going to bite on it a couple times and see what it is. It's He's not going to hurt himself or try to eat it. They're not stupid. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, he took it in, and I was like, okay, what is he going to do with it? Okay. Literally, what like, he do with it? engulfs it to the point where you can't even you can't see, even the, see phone. the phone. Yeah, it's inside, it's inside his tentacles. His he's arms. holding it. And he won't let go of it. He won't let it go, won't let it go, won't let it go. 
I try to put um, one of those acrylic box puzzles that I was talking about with yeah. the shrimp in it to distract him. Because you put food in there, ooh, food. Well, he grabbed that, and then he put it under there with him, too. With the phone. So I had to get another box shrimp, and then he still wouldn't let it go. Mm-hmm. I ended up having to leave. And then when I came back, like, uh, late, late that night, um, he had finally let go of it. And so when I walked in, everyone was like, oh, fuck, yeah, the phone's over there. So I quickly opened it, grab it with the grabbers, and pull it out. And as I walk into the bathroom, it's pouring water. And I'm like, wait a minute. This is a lot of water. The water was coming from in the phone. Yeah. And so I'm looking at the phone, and the phone looks fine. It has a life proofs on it. You know what he did? This fucker was smart enough to search for it and rip them off. The little plastic that's over where your thumbprint goes. Yeah. And then the itty-bitty plastic that's over the actual camera hole. He ripped he them off. He punctured them and ripped them out. And so it flooded with water, and he ruined the phone. Yeah. So it, in theory, was going to be a super badass video, but he instantly destroyed the phone. <laughs> so, uh, I mean... For my next octopus, I do want to try putting a GoPro in there. I think that might be a little bit better, but they can still figure it out. They can still open it. He figured out boxes. He could unscrew things. He would rearrange the aquarium how he saw fit. Mm -hmm. I have a big diver's helmet in there, and it's, I mean, it's it's literally like a a life-size diver's helmet, and I don't know, 20 pounds, and then it's underwater, and he would move it wherever the fuck he wanted. Mm -hmm. He would do whatever he wanted. Pretty intense. He was by far the most intelligent, amazing creature. Had his own personality, was real ferocious. I mean, he was fucking cool. Yeah, he was I had a, so uh, dope. So I wanted to get him a tank bait. And typically you can't keep fish with octopus because no matter what it is, they're going to catch it and kill it and eat it. Right. I mean, that's what it is. They're apex predators. Yeah. Well, so I wanted to get something cool in there that would, you know, add a little bit to the aquarium. I mean, it's just not him. And there are uh, three small fish in there. That the only reason why they're not dead is because they're too quick for him. Yeah, they're little They would swim by him, and he would just act like he's not paying attention, and then try to snatch it out of the air. (laughs) And they would dodge him. They're just too quick for him because they're very small fish. But I decided to get a sea urchin. I did a lot of research, and I talked to one of the main guys on that uh, website. And he's like, yeah, dude, uh, two of the one things you can put in there that kind of clean the tank that are cool are starfish and sea urchins. And Mm -hmm. I've kept both plenty of times. And he goes kind of steer towards the sea urchin because sometimes my octopus would like to have fun and they'd rip the arms off the starfish and throw them around the tank i was like say what now (laughs) he's like they enjoy ripping the arms off of other fucking of starfish and throwing them about the aquarium starfish also reproduce regenerate regenerate their limbs but yes yeah still fucked up (laughs) <laughs> Rip them off and just throw them. So I got this sea urchin, and I was very nervous because if you don't know what a sea urchin is, can you grab me one of those shells? Yep. So this is a skeleton, if you're watching at home, of a sea urchin. They're very small, and they're extremely, extremely delicate. Super delicate. Super delicate. delicate. Uh, I mean, like, like, if like you an eggshell. Hold it, if you hold it too hard, it's going to... It's like an eggshell, like, like at Easter. Like, they're so delicate once they're hollow. Yeah. That's exactly how it is. If you drop it from, like... Two inches off, you know, two inches oh, off the it table, it, it shatters. So their infrastructure, their body, in, uh, internal skeleton is very, very fragile. Yeah. But they told me they he would not mess with it, that they don't like the prickly feeling. They don't want to right. get pricked. And so I was like, okay, I can see that. And uh, octopus are very, um, very particular about texture. Mm-hmm. Some things they really like to touch, some things they really do not like to touch. Yeah. Actually, in large aquariums, um, large aquariums in the back, I only know this because I worked at the zoo, so I actually got to see how they build it. They're just like cement aquariums, and they're open-topped. But there's um, there's so much area above the water's edge that hopefully the octopus wouldn't climb out. Right. For additional cautionary, um, they would line it with astroturf. Oh, shit. Because the octopus don't like the feel. Oh, They'd shit. stick their arms up to climb out and touch it and be like, ugh. They'd just pull it back. They're like, I don't <laughs> like that at all. Octopus are very peculiar about texture that's so funny so they said he wouldn't fuck with the urchin because they don't like that prickly feeling he would reach out his arm and be like oh ooh, mm-mm, that's weird yeah get that away from me well i put him in the tank and he jumped on that urchin like no other went on it touched it and like shrieked back i was like what the fuck i don't <laughs> okay that's not a toy <laughs> that's not a toy so he let it go and it was a beautiful purple little sea urchin mm-hmm and it lived in there for like two months with him. And urchins are like uh, snails. They literally travel as fast as a snail and they just go and eat algae. But they're really slow. Right. It'll take an urchin all, all goddamn day 
to go from one side to the other side. Yeah. And you'll see it throughout the day, like moving on the glass or in the sand. Well, one time, it just so happened my friends were over, and they're like, what the fuck is Bubbles doing? I look over, and he's throwing the urchin <laughs> across the tank. Like, he's trying to throw, like, a, a, like trying to throw out someone at home plate. Like, <laughs> slinging him, like, across the aquarium. And by chance, I got that on video. We'll post that one, too. I was like, what are you doing, Bubbles? He was just having fun, like... It took that urchin all fucking day to get to the other side where the nice algae was, and he just threw him, like, set him back a whole day. Like, no, bitch, you go back over there. But after that day, he, there was something up. He liked that urchin, and he would fuck with him. That is so funny, though. He ended up eating him, but... Yeah, he ended up... Which I put on that page, and no one had seen before. No one had seen before. Even the foremost expert on there. Well, Bubbles was an anomaly. That's yeah, he for was. Sure. he was amazing. It was just really cool, some of the... Uh, the toys I put in there that he would love to play with the toys. He was yeah, very he interested. Yeah, he was so interactive, which was so dope because not a lot of fish are. Yeah, like, it, I mean, when you walk into my room and you go past the aquariums, they will, like, go kind of towards you in the aquarium yeah. as you walk by, but that's about it. They think they're going to get fed. Right. That's pretty much what it is. Him, on the other chance, he would watch you. He would watch what we're doing. And, like, you know, typically he likes to hide in his cave in that diver's helmet, mm-hmm. but he would come out and really watch you, or he would watch TV. Yeah, and, like, watch the dogs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, he yep. was just a really, really dope animal to have. They're amazing. He uh, he passed away just a couple months ago, but um, he didn't pass away for any bad reasons. He was full-grown. He lived his full lifespan, and uh, he's a big boy. He, he got quite large. He was big. He got big. Yeah. So, uh, I'm on we the hunt for post, another one. We should post, like, a baby picture of Bubbles, and then... Yeah. I'll like post one, the like, end. the day of that I got him, and, yeah. like, near the, last week. Oh my god, he's, he's huge. Yeah, he's that's a monster. For sure. Really, really cool animal though. Can actively edit their RNA. Can change under any it's environment. So Venomous, super fucking strong. Nine brains, three, three hearts. hearts. <laughs> yeah, older than dinosaurs. I mean, they're amazing. Yeah, that's for sure. I don't know what time we're at. That's what I was just yep. looking at. Well, guys. So this is our aquarium episode yeah. update. <laughs> I hope you guys watch this one on YouTube because there's going to be a ton of pictures and videos and you'll see some really cool shit. Yeah, so many pictures and videos. Sorry we didn't get to the other animals, but we'll definitely include those in other episodes. Some, Don't you worry. Yeah, so there's some cool stuff that we've had, um, like sugar gliders and ferrets and a macaw mm-hmm. that was pretty much a terrorist to oh my dogs my in terror. He was... Some, he was a trip. We'll talk about him on another He time. was such a trip. We'll have to tell some chip terror stories. Um, obviously, he had a snake. He mentioned that in previous episodes. That was uh, murdered by a mouse. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Fucked up. Yep. We've had um, baby chickens in the past. Like We've just had a whole bunch of mm-hmm. animals, and so it was pretty dope. But I guess that's it for our aquarium yeah. episode. If y'all, uh, any of y'all keep aquariums... Um, or any cool pets. We'd love to see them. Post them on the page. Any cool pets. Honestly, if you have any questions about starting your own aquarium or anything, like... Let me know, man. Hit them up. It's all there for uh, for learning. Absolutely. Um, But yeah, so we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please watch on YouTube, listen on iTunes, share with your friends, go like and subscribe, obviously. And if you haven't seen our previous episodes, be sure to do that. But other than that... Let's thank our bands. Yeah. Our intro music is Saltwater Slide. Those guys are uh, local from here in San Antonio. They have an amazing reggae vibe. They always put me in a really good, really good chill vibe. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were really big fans cool. of Bubbles. They were, actually. They were really, I put a couple videos to their music and they were pretty stoked about that. Yeah. Um, they're very, you know what? They love the water too. Mm-hmm. One of the guys in the band, he's a, a, a aquatic botanist. Mm hmm. Um, they start and put on a huge beach cleanup during the summer. It's a free concert to anyone that helps them clean up the beach. Yeah, That's fucking which badass. Is awesome. They're really good guys. Check them out on uh, Pandora, Spotify, you know, their YouTube. social media and YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. And our outro music is Love Killed the Hero. Our Their lead singer is Wally Robles. Wally. One of our good friends. And go like their NPR Tiny Dust submission video for So Damn Nice. We cannot thank both of those bands enough. Hell yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. And we'll see you guys next Tuesday. See you guys. It's getting late. My body's tired. That's all right. Because I don't mind.